Okay, so we are here with Mimi today. This is Mimi's third treatment. We've done a series of monthly treatments, so this is number three. And what we're addressing is her background photo damage. You can see maybe some scattered lentigines, some lentigos, especially where she's had a lot of chronic sun. What you can't see uh, without the aid of a woods lamp or ultraviolet accentuation is all of the pigment that's still deeper in her skin. So I am targeting both what I can see and what I can't see. And we'll do it at a low fluence and we're going to paint. We're gonna just go over and over these areas. I'm gonna treat the entire face. And today we're also gonna go down and treat her neck. So this uh, done repeatedly will definitely lighten up some of this just chronic, background, what I call pigment noise. And at the same time, because we know we're putting that laser energy down into the dermis, every time we put heat there, we, we are going to stimul stimulate collagen, help to upregulate collagen type 1, and help to decrease collagen degradation. So it sort of gives a global improvement of some skin texture and tone. So I'm going to look at my screen and the nice thing is I have all these different spot sizes that I can choose from. Now I'm looking at Mimi and I know I want a low fluence. Uh, for example, I could choose the six millimeter and I know that my jewels are going to come up as a default of 1.60. However, I want a little bit higher. She's skin type one. She can definitely uh, tolerate this and so we'll go down we'll we'll do a five millimeter hand piece and now this sets the joules at 2.25 joules per centimeter squared so this is where I want to be I am just going to take out the spacer I'm going to put the five millimeter in easy to snap in now I'm going to look at my repeat mode because I'm doing the paint mode I'm going to have higher Hertz we're going to go at five Hertz up to a maximum of five. If, you, if I wanted to go slower, I could set it down. And I'm going to press ready. It asks me to verify my selected tip. Yes, I have five millimeters. And we will be ready to go. I'm gonna tell Mimi that we're gonna do a little test. And I also wanna get her used to a little bit of the sound. Um, so to get started, I'm going, it's already been pressed and ready, and I'm going to press this, the light goes on, and then Mimi, what you're going to feel is just a little test strip, here we go. How's that? Yeah. And this is great, there's just a little bit of background erythema, and maybe one of these lentigines has a little bit of whitish color change. This is perfect. Um, here we go. So there'll be those loud snaps when we're really connecting with some pigment. So it's very easy to maneuver. The treatment can be very fast. You may see a little bit of light when I'm around your eyes, but you're still protected, so not to worry. And I'm just sort of doing two passes. And this is very nice because this does not occlude my vision. I can see very well and I can hold the handpiece at a right angle so I know I'm getting very good um, a laser beam angle and penetration. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the forehead. And because we've had two prior treatments, the, the pop popping, the, the loud sound, we're not hearing as much. Okay, so we're just gonna come down there. So I'm gonna do the crow's feet area.
can see that loud noise is because this is where the majority, she has a lot of lateral photo damage. It's like the 4th of July. Still doing okay? Mm -hmm. I like to stretch the skin a little bit taut. Every once in a while, I just take a peek at how the tissue, laser tissue interaction is going, and it's as expected. Okay, very good. And so here, we've had a little bit more lag time. There's just a little bit of background erythema building up, but nothing too major. I'm gonna, just to complete, do the nose and the perioral area. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the chin, and lastly, the upper lip. Okay, now on the neck, because we know there's less adnexal structures, we just wanna make sure that her reaction stays the same. So again, I'm just going to do a couple of little lines. And just make sure that I don't see any kind of aggressive reaction happening here on the neck. Now, we would have made sure before we started treatment that she wasn't tan, uh, that there was no irritation, there wasn't any kind of inflammatory reaction happening on the skin. Uh, it wasn't irritated maybe from a product or retinol, retinoid, for example. And that she had cleaned off any makeup, you know, clean, clean skin, freshly washed. You can kind of hear back here where her hair has shaded her neck, very little. And then when we go further where some of this poikiloderma is, you start to hear a little bit more of that acoustical effect. And once again, what I'm targeting here are the melanocytes and melanosomes, and we know that they're um, thermal relaxation time is in the realm of nanoseconds and that this nanosecond laser is specifically aligned to target that pigment without creating too much collateral heat. She will be a little pink. The neck will lag behind the face as far as how long the pinkness will last. Okay, I think we're finished. Okay, so now we've finished the treatment. Uh, she's a little bit pink, especially the neck, which I treated last. I can see a little bit of erythema around these collections of the pigmented lesions, but I don't see any hiving, any edema, any, and anything. So. Um, what I'm going to ask Mimi to do is be a good girl and put her sunscreen on before she goes out. Um, and for the next couple of days, just avoid anything too abrasive. You don't want to use anything that's going to irritate your skin. Um, if you're using retinol or a retinoid, just take a couple of days off. And that's it. Okay.